Hello, hi, um, my name is Mo and I thought today I'd do a video responding to Isaac Butterfield. Uh, a few disclaimers before I start the video. Yes, I'm wearing the exact same clothes I've been wearing in my past three videos. That is because I am disgusting. Second of all, my hair's not greasy, I just had a shower. I may be disgusting, but I do still shower, so at least I've got one thing going for me. But anyway, I've actually been contemplating whether or not I should make a video on Isaac for quite a while now, but for some reason I never got round to it. I guess it's because he's not usually the type of person I'd bother responding to. But a friend of mine recently mentioned that they were subscribed to him, and that sort of reignited my interest, if you will. I find his content to be pretty troubling, and not because he's doing anything different to all the other anti-SJW YouTubers, but because he seems to get away with it in a way that others don't. I don't know why that is, but I've seen hardly anyone call him out on his reactionary rhetoric. The only person that pops into mind is Vosh, and quite frankly I thought Vosh's video on Isaac was pretty bad. So who is Isaac Butterfield, you may ask? Well. Isaac is your classic anti-SJW YouTuber. He also happens to be from Australia, which is a shame. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I love Australia. Anyway, here are some of the cinematic masterpieces that Mr Butterfield has created of late. Isaac is a reactionary who doesn't know what a reactionary is. That seems to be yelling at reactionaries and fascists. Who knows what the future will hold? Reactionaries being people like me who react to things. Apparently he thinks it means you react to videos. That's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? I actually feel a bit sorry for him. Isaac, my guy. Allow me to explain to you, allow me to mansplain to you what a reactionary is. In political science, a reactionary can be described as someone who holds political views that favour a return to a previous political state of society that they believe possess characteristics that are negatively absent from the contemporary status quo of society. I hope that helped. So, this is going to be a little bit different to some of my other videos. Instead of responding to a specific video or idea that he brings forth, I'm going to be running through a multitude of different things and just sort of lay all my criticisms out on the table. <laughs> because, oh boy, I have quite a few. These include the way he talks about trans people, the way he talks about gay people, his terrible criticisms of veganism, his terrible criticisms of feminism, his misleading use of data, his baseless arguments, but most importantly, oh, most importantly, the fact he's so incredibly guilty of the fallacy of composition that pretty much every single one of his videos relies on it. Now I know that Isaac's channel is based around comedy, and it's definitely not my sort of comedy, but I actually do stand-up comedy myself, so I know that comedy is subjective. But comedy can be used to further a political agenda, whether that's intentional or not. We all have opinions, and they come out through the work we create. So if I think a message is harmful, yeah, I'm gonna criticise it, because comedy isn't a shield. But hey, to give Isaac credit where it's due, I watched some clips of his stand-up comedy to compare it to his YouTube channel. I actually found some of it pretty funny. But whatever. Who cares what I find funny? That's not what we're here to talk about today. So anyway, let's get straight into it. The crux of my issue comes down to his rather generous use of the fallacy of composition. So what is the fallacy of composition, you may ask? The fallacy of composition refers to a situation in which someone infers that something is true of the whole from the fact that it is true of some part of the whole. If I were to say, this window is made of glass, therefore the house in which it is a part of is also made of glass, I'd be committing the fallacy of composition. A significant amount of Isaac's videos are based around this notion. Isaac finds a crazy vegan or crazy feminist or trans person or whatever group he's decided to make fun of that particular day. He then takes this person, tears them to shreds and says, oh, look how crazy this feminist is. All feminists are crazy, am I right, boys? And then all his little fanboys are like, oh, oh yes, yes, Isaac, all feminists are crazy. Feminism is cancer. And then they go back to wanking over hentai and bullying 14-year-old girls on TikTok. <laughs> Laugh at me all you want, but I'm not wrong. Now, to make it clear to any Isaac Butterfield fans that have stumbled across this video, I am in no way denying that some of the people that Isaac responds to are a bit crazy. You know, some of them do say pretty stupid things. I'm not going to defend that. But that's not the issue here. The issue is the way he conflates one person with the whole group. So now I've got that out of the way, let's respond to some more specific issues that I have with him. The first is veganism. 
everyone's favourite topic. Now, I was born into a pescatarian family. I went vegetarian at about nine and vegan at age 13. And I am still vegan to this day. Why am I vegan? Well, when I was 13, I got really interested in atheism and by proxy, moral philosophy. To this day, it's still my favourite type of philosophy to discuss. I mean, at the end of the day, morality is the basis for most philosophy. I don't think that's a controversial claim to make. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is I've thought long and hard about the morality behind veganism. I'm not vegan because I want to be. A lot of non-vegan food is really nice. I am vegan because based on my moral framework, I recognise that it is the only way for me to be morally consistent. So Isaac loves to mock and shit on vegans. But I have yet to see him present any arguments against us that aren't along the lines of ah, look, it's a crazy vegan. Because hey, I'll admit, the vegan community has a massive problem with optics. I was a part of a vegan activist page on Facebook, but I had to leave because I found so many people on there to be really obnoxious. However, that's not an argument against veganism, is it, Isaac? I'll give you a hint. No, it's, it's not. Now, I won't bother going into my arguments on veganism in this video as that's not the reason I'm bringing this up. But if you are interested in hearing my arguments, just say so in the comments and I might make a video on it. So anyway, moving on, let's look at the way he talks about trans people. Now I'm transgender. Haha, -ha, surprise. I'm non-binary and I'm still waiting to start my medical transition. It's hard when you have no money and live in a hall, but it will be happening at some point. I hope. Because if it doesn't, I'll probably kill myself. Wait, what? I'm joking. I'm sort of joking. He's made many comments on trans people over the years, most of them just being edgy jokes. <laughs> But make no mistake, you know, he's mocked our identities, our struggles, even pulling the classic turf and alluding to the fact that we are bathroom predators. A non-binary man-woman because they're unsure of their gender. Oh my god, bro. Fit within those norms, but you have to be different because it's a cool thing to do. If you've got a vagina, go to the woman's bathroom. If you've got a penis, go to the men's. End of fucking story. All the while claiming that, you know, he does support trans people, just not the crazy ones, of course. Does that sound familiar to any of you? Are there any YouTubers that you can think of who also do that? I, I just can't think of who. But I actually think I'll focus on a smaller issue here. Just for the heck of it, because we know all that other stuff is wrong, or at least we should do. I've covered that in many a video. So what I'll focus on today is this. It says it in a fucking bio. It also says a gender pronoun, so you can tell right away she's a fucking idiot. Seems small, doesn't it? Pretty harmless. Just a little joke. Yeah, well, I'm gonna have to disagree, and let me explain. These jokes have a direct and adverse effect on the trans community because they normalize the idea that we're somehow crazy. They push the narrative that we're outsiders and that there's something fundamentally wrong with the way in which we interact and perceive the world. These jokes provide the audience with a sense of self-assurance and make them feel like they're allowed to mock trans people. If I was being ultra charitable, I'd say these jokes come from a lack of understanding of trans people. But let's be real, it's probably just because he thinks we're weird. I held off putting pronouns in my bio for so long for this exact reason. When you do, people like Isaac will use it as a reason to discredit everything you have to say. It's like a free pass to mock you, basically. Oh, look, a little snowflake tran with a pronouns in its bio. That kind of shit. But there's far more to it than just wanting to be woke, as someone like Isaac would have you believe. Now, some trans people, they don't really want pronouns in their bio, maybe because they don't want them reminded that they're trans, or maybe it's just not a big deal to them, they don't care. But for some trans people, it can save them a lot of discomfort. When someone dead names you or misgenders you, it's like a massive kick in the gut because it reminds you of everything and makes you feel like people don't see you for who you are. You may think that that's an overreaction, but if you had gender dysphoria, perhaps you'd understand. It hurts. It makes you feel ill. And then your brain's just like, huh, everyone thinks you're a freak. So that's why it upsets us. That's why trans people put their pronouns in their bio, to avoid discomfort. People who accuse us of being snowflakes don't understand the struggles of trans people 
and they don't understand gender dysphoria. So you can mock us for it all you like, you can call us snowflakes, but our very identities are being subjected to ridicule. I think our reasons for feeling hurt are pretty justified. What are yours? What's your excuse for having a meltdown over the fact we have a couple of words in our bio? Here is a great, you know, a just sublime example of freedom of speech in which Isaac asserts that pansexuality isn't real. With this self-described pansexual. And for those of you who don't know what pansexual is, which should be all of you because it's not a thing. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, can Vosh only like women now? I'm bisexual, do you have a problem with that? Because bisexuality is synonymous to pansexuality. Pansexual is simply a more precise way of saying the gender of your partner is not relevant. I've always explained it as so. It's the difference between liking a red flower and liking a flower that happens to be red. You could argue that's semantic, sure, but there is a notable difference. So should I, Isaac, just call up all my exes and just inform them that we were never really together because bisexuality isn't real? Or is it only pansexuality you have a problem with? Either way, telling someone that their sexuality isn't real? Not a good look, really. In this particular video, he also made a rather large amount of jokes about Vosh's sexuality. To the point where it was like, um, is this actually a joke anymore? I'll leave that up to you, the audience, to decide. Fuck you, cocksucker, with your hand in your little bag of chips and your other hand on your fucking mate's balls, cock smoker. Suck a fat one! But the last thing I want to address is his god-awful use of data. Or lack thereof, because it's actually embarrassing. All I needed to do was click on the first video that came up to find factual inaccuracies. So let's roll the first clip. Eat as much meat as you want this fire season. It's gonna have zero effect on the planet. I'm sorry, mate, but eating meat does harm the planet. This isn't even a contentious assertion. It's the scientific consensus. It's interesting to note that he doesn't actually cite a single source when he states this. Oh, I wonder why. Oh, but don't worry, my friends. I've gone out and I've got some sources of my own for you. Livestock systems currently cover 45% of total land on Earth and is the leading cause for deforestation and habitat destruction. Raising animals for meat, dairy and eggs requires a huge amount of energy, so much so that more greenhouse gas emissions are produced from animal agriculture than the entire transportation industry combined. Animal agriculture is also responsible for causing the largest mass extinction of the past 65 million years, and by the year 2048 we could see fishless oceans. So with all that considered, how the fuck can you make the assertion that eating meat doesn't harm the planet? Look man, I can't stop you from eating meat. You're your own person. All I'm saying is don't lie about it. Here are just a handful of the studies I cited, all of which can be found in the description below. But anyway, let's move on to the next dumb thing that he says. The murder rate for trans victims is lower than that of the cis population. Isaac, honey, there are less trans people in the world. I, I actually can't. I, 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 I can't. I fucking can't. I will concede that a lack of accurate and reliable data collection makes it impossible to know how widespread this violence actually is. The size of the transgender population cannot be accurately determined for a number of reasons. One being so many people hide their identity because of this very discrimination we're talking about. Another factor that further complicates data analysis is the fact that often when a trans person is murdered, they'll not be legally recognized as the gender they identify as, and therefore their death won't be counted as a hate crime. Among the known transgender victims between 2013 and 2015, only 30% were killed in states that have hate crime laws that account for crimes motivated by the victim's gender identity. But despite these provisions and a federal hate crime law, not a single one of these murders was prosecuted or reported to the FBI as a hate crime. The patterns found in these crimes are indicative of the widespread violence and harassment that transgender people face every day in the United States. A conservative estimate based on the information currently available to us shows that transgender women alone face 4.3 times the risk of becoming homicide victims than the general population of all women. So Mr. Isaac Butterfield completely misses all the nuance and just stumbles about citing a Twitter thread on screen and he fails to link any of the studies that he claims back his assertion. 
So what's the conclusion? Well, I guess it would be this. Isaac Butterfield is a reactionary YouTuber who likes to make jokes at the expense of minorities. His criticisms boil down to nothing but ad hominems, cherry-picked data, and fallacious claims about entire groups of people. His assertions are unsubstantiated, and anyone who bothers to do a second of research would find them utterly embarrassing. So there we are. That's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I was a little bit salty, so I'm sorry about that. I can't help it. Um, nothing annoys me more when I see people with huge platforms misleading their audience. This isn't a hate video, obviously, that's, that's not what we do on this channel. We're, we're all about spreading the love. But anyway, I hope you have a good day, stay safe, see ya!